In this video, um, I want to point out this figure from the textbook because um, this is a very, very powerful um, scheme. And it's something that you should spend a good amount of time looking at. Because this takes everything from chapter 18 and 19 and puts it into one place. So if you had to print something out and kind of have this with you as you're doing all of your problems, this is the thing that you would want to print out. Because what this does is this shows you the relationship between everything we learned in chapter 18 and everything we learned in chapter 19. The only thing that's not on here is the Nernst equation, which we're going to look at in the next video. So what you can see here is, in essence, we have the four main outputs, which is the E cell, that's the electrochemical data. We have the equilibrium constant. We, we have uh, calorimetric data, delta H and delta S. And then we have composition data, which is what the equilibrium mixture would look like, the products over the reactants. These are what we call the observables on the outside. So those four things I talked about, those are the things that you can observe by experiment. And what links them all is delta G. So delta G is the link between all of these observables. So we have, uh, if we want to go from delta G to the electrochemical data, we have our delta G is equal to minus NFE cell. If we want to go um, from delta G to the equilibrium constant, we have minus RT ln K. And you'll notice that they've added an extra line here for the equation that we just derived, which is that E cell is equal to RT over NF ln K. So you can see that there's a direct link between the equilibrium constant and the electrochemical data through that equation that we just derived. But in essence, you can still see that the way these are linked is through this delta G. So going from the electrochemical data to the equilibrium constant is still a, a delta G link. It's just that we were able to take those two equations and equate them. In theory, you could write an equation also that would allow you to go directly between electrochemical data and delta H and delta S. That would just be that minus NFE is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And then you can reorganize that um, such that E is equal to, you know, um, you'd have to flip the sign so you'd be... T delta S minus delta H over NF, um, if you brought that over to the other side. But uh, so you can, you, you can see how powerful this chart is because all of those equations, those seemingly complex links between everything is put into one thing. Now, one thing I want to point out is when it comes to composition data, what this is, is this is, think of this as K is equal to the concentration of the products over the reactants, right? So that's what this means, meaning we can get the value of K, and then if we know the concentration of one of the species, we can then use K to calculate the rest, right? We can create our ice table and come up with everything else. So that's what they're getting at with composition data. Um, but again, this is a very powerful chart, and you should uh, use this as you're going through all the problems. And this is an excellent summary of the last few videos that kind of captures everything we've talked about.